Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is so sick, it has me sniffling and coughing. <coughs> Thank you B&H Photo for sponsoring this video. Before heading back to LA, I swung by B&H after making an online order for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Their online store has everything and it's a great resource when researching what camera gear to buy. But I would really recommend visiting the shop if you're ever in New York City. Look up, the, the products meet you at the cash register via a conveyor belt. B&H specializes in cameras and tech and is there to help you along the way. And they also have great candy. Got the candy. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Oh my gosh, it's a mouthful, but I actually have a special connection to it. Back in 2015, it was one of my first full-on camera reviews. Yes, you can still watch it today, but stay on this video, please. I actually know how to talk to a camera nowadays. The one in 2015, it's very embarrassing. Seriously, do not click on that link. The pocket camera allowed me to get cinematic in a very small package and I outfitted it with like a cage and everything. So I say that to say, I'm kind of nostalgic when it comes to this camera and the fact that it can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second, 1080 at 120 frames per second blows my mind. But first, I want to uh, hang out with some YouTube friends, uh, Colin and Samir, to test out the features of this camera. Come on, guys. Hope so. What's up? Okay, so here's the deal. Hey, let's get you guys on some stools. You guys can learn more about them and I can test out this camera and then I'll let you know my thoughts. Okay, guys, it's time for you to get on the hot seat. Cool. Good luck. What's up, Peachy fam? I'm Colin, this is Samir, and we have a YouTube channel called Colin and Samir. We met over seven years ago building our first business called the Lacrosse Network. It's a digital sports network dedicated to the sport that we both grew up playing, lacrosse. Eventually, we sold the network and became independent creators, and we started a new YouTube channel called Colin and Samir. All with the goal of making documentaries and trying to become filmmakers. Making the decision to put ourselves on YouTube has changed our lives drastically for the better, and over the years, we've met some incredible people. Do I not have a line here? You didn't have a line. I don't have That's a line. no line. That's just all about me. He's writing this The channel is basically himself. just Colin and yeah, then Samir sometimes. On our channel, we tell stories about creators and bring you along with our journey of becoming filmmakers here in Los Angeles. We also sell skateboards and we make them as well. We make and sell them. Yeah. Crap. Get the f***ing line right, man. Subscribe now, maybe? All right, Peachy fam, that's it for us. Thanks for listening to our story and thanks, Sarah, for coming out and making this video with us. It's awesome to finally meet you. Same, guys. Okay, I'm gonna try to hold this Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K in vlogging mode. It's already hurting my hand out. Fun fact, they actually put a record button on the front for us vloggers, but then we don't have a flip screen, we don't have things that make this a good vlogging camera. I think this was a really good opportunity for me to kind of learn the ropes with this camera. Thanks for allowing me to do that with you guys. Now I'm gonna go shoot some more footage and tell you my thoughts. Okay, guys, thank cool. you. Thanks for inviting me. Bye, guys. Okay, bye, guys. The energy here is exceptional, and again, I mentioned it with, you know, Irene flowing through here and everyone kind of uh, intrepid, you know, to see everyone get excited about this event and about all these guys coming to this local beach here. It's contagious, and I'm, I'm buzzing from it. So let's get the not so great stuff about this camera out of the way. Being a cinema camera for only $1,295, you know, it's gonna have its quirks. It's very annoying that the screen doesn't articulate at all. It's just, this is this is what you get. When I was shooting John skating out in LA and it was super sunny, if I wanted to see what was going down down here, I literally got on my stomach to see the camera. For that reason and many others, this thing needs to be rigged. I just pretty much used it handheld and a tripod this entire time, but in order to really utilize this camera, you need a rig on it. Uh, and then also, 
attaching a nice mic to it because it actually has a mini XLR input. So once you got that, an external monitor, you can also hook up an SSD drive and plug it in via USB-C and just record all of your raw footage, all of your ProRes footage directly to that drive. So you're gonna get the most out of this camera and have all of the nifty doodads plugged in via a cage or a rig and then bonus points if you have a gimbal or one of those easy rigs. The shape is obviously much bigger than the previous one. Pretty plasticky and bulky um, and the battery life, it's very bad. But they use LPE6, which is the classic Canon battery. So I'm sure you have a ton of these laying around. So once you finish filming your 4K footage for 30 minutes, you can just pop in a new battery. Okay, so let's get into the good stuff because there's more good than bad again. Have I mentioned that I love this camera? Also a reminder, all of the BNH links to this, the lenses I've used, everything is in the description below. One more shout out to BNH because they truly care about creators. I know locally in New York City, they do so much to help creators with loans before you buy gear and also supporting the community through events. I personally work with BNH a lot outside of this YouTube channel. So I just, they're my homies. I rep them. I rep them hard. So if you ever have questions about camera gear, BNH usually has the answer or someone who can help you. Why I love this camera. Hopefully by now you've seen that the footage that comes straight out of here is cinematic as heck. It looks so good. I recorded everything in 4K, um, the UHD, but it also does 4K DCI, which is a little bit bigger than UHD. I filmed everything in ProRes HQ. My previous experience with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, I did everything raw and then stitched it together and exported it ProRes via DaVinci. And it was just such a pain in the butt of a workflow. I mean, all of my Creative Spaces TV episodes from years ago look amazing. And that's because I was using the Blackmagic for all of it. But shooting 4K in this and shooting ProRes, it basically you know, they're gonna look very similar. Maybe the whole raw workflow is an entirely different video with this guy, but I was very satisfied with the ProRes that was coming out of this. Because this is a cinema camera, it doesn't worry about doing everything. So the menus are so lovely. They are so simple. And the five inch touchscreen is a dream to work with. Everything works and moves around just like you think it would. And there's no useless buttons. There is one picture button where you can take a picture, but that's about it for the photo side of this. This is a cinema camera. This is a video camera. So when people ask Sarah, should I get this or the a7 III or a 5D or a 6D? DSLRs, the new mirrorless cameras, they do really good at doing everything pretty good. Having articulating screens and EVF, having decent autofocus and taking raw images from a tiny little mirrorless camera body. I would still recommend an a7 III to anyone who needs that perfect all around photo video camera. Again, no perfect cameras exist, but they're perfect for certain situations. And this guy is not an all around camera. It does have an active micro four thirds mount, um, but it actually has a four thirds sensor. So it's a little bit bigger than my GH5 sensor, but I can still use my GH5 lenses. So I was shooting everything on the 12 to 60 f 2.8 to 4 and then also my new lens, the 15 millimeter f 1.7. The 12 to 60 is a great lens and it has image stabilization built in the lens. So because this is an active mount, it was working great on the black magic. The 13 stops of dynamic range is very obvious when you see these images, especially the video I got out in the sun with John skateboarding and just the image is so sharp. It's very easy to manipulate and post whenever you're trying to lighten, brighten something, just making the footage how you want it to look like. I shot everything in the film preset and I got it looking like how I wanted it to look like. It has a dual native ISO up to 25,600 and it's just so much better in low light than the previous one. Again, this won't compete with any of the Sony mirrorless cameras, but the low light was so bad on the previous Blackmagic that I was shocked that I was able to film a 120 frames per second clip after the sun had set. It's a little grainy shirt, but that wouldn't even have been possible with a previous Blackmagic. It looks so good. So is it worth that pain to get a cage to make this fit in my workflow to bring extra cameras to wherever I'm going besides just my Sony setup? Maybe I'm tempted. And now that I have the Micro Four Thirds glass, I don't have to use that six $600 speed booster I was using back in the day. Oh my gosh, do I need to buy another one of these? Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this one. Is it too quirky for you? Or is it a steal at $12.95 and being able to get 4K DCI at 60 frames per second? Crazy, just crazy. Again, thank you BNH for sponsoring this video. Check out the links in the description below. Until next time, guys, stay peachy. Okay, bye.